Turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs in the 14th chapter. And then we're going to go to chapter 16. So move over, over a couple pages and put your finger in chapter 16 too. Well, those that have cell phones, uh, if you... <laughs> hard to move over a couple of pages and put your finger... <laughs> Hey man, I love to read the Bible off my, I love when I'm sitting in the emergency rooms or whatever. I, last night I was down there at Sandy Mom and you can just sit and read. Everybody thinks you're on Facebook. I can just sit and read on interrupted. Appreciate it. Book of Proverbs, Proverbs 14. In case you all don't know, this is Courtney Kevin Jennings' daughter. Uh, those that uh, most people probably know her, but in case you didn't, that's who she is. We appreciate her saying beautiful I appreciate it. Amen. Good to have her with us tonight. I'm glad she stopped by this way. And glad the Lord told her and glad she listened. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. So uh, Proverbs 14 and verse 12, and then we're going, we're going to go over in chapter 16. Proverbs 14, one verse. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's right. Scan over to uh, chapter 16 and go down to verse 25. Chapter 16, Proverbs, verse 25. See if you recognize this verse. <laughs> there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. For trivia's sake, I don't know if you knew it said the exact same thing one right after another. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy, and we thank you, Lord, for your great grace. Lord, I've enjoyed your house of prayer this evening. Lord, there's been a good spirit, and I sure appreciate it. And God, I know you appreciate it. And Lord God, people, minds are up on you, and we thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we've heard good testimony, we've heard praise reports, and we praise your name, God, and we thank you for that. Lord, beautiful songs of Zion and handshakes and hugs and the privilege of prayer, we praise your name for that. Now, Lord, we come to this part in the message, and we always ask that you anoint physically, we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh. But above all, God, we ask that you anoint spiritually, may preach thy word in the power of the Spirit, tying together the loose end and fill the void we leave because of our inabilities. Let thy word go out freely. We thank you and we love you and we praise you, Lord, for all these things. In thy name we ask, dear Jesus, anoint. Amen and amen. Now the Bible says that for a reason. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. We got to be sure what way we're on. It can fool people. Satan is a master at deception. We may not give him power for a lot of things and he doesn't have more power than Christ has. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. His power now has been taken away over the power of death. He no longer possesses that as he used to. Now we have a victory. We have a way to go to heaven. We have life that came because of Christ. Hebrews 2. So he defeated him who had the power of death that is the devil. But he is a liar and the father of it. His whole mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. He has uh, made some of the mess down through time fall at his feet. He tried the best of the best, Jesus Christ, but Jesus never failed. He tried against Job that he could make Job just give up and curse his God and die. Keith and I was talking about that, and Keith preached on it. He said, Tuesday night. Where Job was seeking the Lord, he was seeking, he didn't know what was going on. He, if I can just find him, if I can just plead my call, have you ever been there? 
They think, whoa, Lord, <laughs> if you'll just take care of this, if, Lord, there's, what can I do, Lord? Are you hearing my prayer, Lord? Are, how, how come this is going on? Lord, how come that seemingly others do this? And Lord, I'm trying. How? And you went there and you've done that over in your mind. You might have not fell down. You might have did, not did, uh, fall by the wayside by all means. Amen. But the cross of your mind is a battle. Right? But Job won the battle. Amen. I'm glad. But the devil tempted one that was two that was perfect without sin. And Job and the devil won the battle. Look at this Eve. Look at this tree. You'll be as gods. Look at it. It's good to look upon. The fruit is good. Desire to make one wise. He deceived someone without sin. Someone that had no fleshly battle to fight. He still deceived them. And he's been a great deceiver ever since. The Pharisees in the day of Christ was completely deceived. Amen. And what worship was that is completely deceived with what a worshiping God was that is completely deceived at what the, uh, the ritual and what the temple meant and what the rules of God and the laws of God that is completely deceived about the working of God. Completely deceived. At least all the leaders that is completely deceived so he is a deceiver. Understand there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is ways of death. It's a possibility. I, I've known many people. I, I've known people I, that I thought no way in this world it would be an impossibility. I, if I was a betting person, I, I would have bet every dollar I had that they will not go back on God. And they went back on God by deception. Of the enemy. I've seen people that I thought would never turn to a modern way. I thought they would never change a book that they read from. I, I thought they would never, uh, amen, accept a, a sin uh, as just another lifestyle. Uh, hey, uh, I buy a sin. Uh, and they went the other way. He's a deceiver. Understand that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, this is not political at all, but you all probably read in the paper the battle with the Methodist Conference. Now, don't jump up and say how bad the Methodists are. There's some mighty fine people in Methodist churches. Understand that this was the big thing. It can come in any church there is. Uh, amen. All you have to do is get a group uh, that tries to bring sin in. Uh, I, mean, the, I, I was amazed. I, I didn't think any way, and everybody I talked to didn't think any way uh, uh, that they would be able to hold them off. Really didn't think they could. But they did. Praise the Lord. But they did. Now how they did it was by foreign. It was a world comfort. So by the foreign, uh, people of Africa and all that was a very conservative. Uh, amen. But actually if it had been left up to the United States delegates only, uh, it wouldn't have been held off. Amen. And you hear the speeches and you hear all the things. You think, how can we go this far? How can we go? Because there's a way that seems right on demand. But the ends are all are ways of death. These are professional people. These are Bible theologians. These are people that say they're called to preach the word. Some of them have been raised in church. Some of them have been in church all their life. Some of them have very dedicated. And how can they be so deceived against the basic word of God? Amen. How could we be so deceived? Uh, Ephesians scripture also read, By grace are you saved through faith, that know yourself, know the works, at least any man should boast. How can we misinterpret that? Amen. How could we possibly be deceived uh, and say there's one more than one way uh, made of heaven? Uh, amen. Buddha cannot give you eternal life. Uh, amen. Uh, rocks and stones uh, and anybody else by name. Uh, and no ways can give you eternal life. Uh, hey, uh, the only one who can give you eternal life is Jesus Christ. There's a problem with thinking someone else can give you eternal life. The problem is one day you're going to die and you're going to turn to a pile of dirt. Amen. You ain't gold dust or silver dust. You're just plain old dirt like me. Amen. And one of these days the only way that dirt can come alive is by the power of God that put life in you. Amen. That plant of you. Just like a seed of corn and life comes out. Amen. He may plant you as a wheat. <laughs> He might plant you as a clover, 
And that's Bible in 1 Corinthians 15. Amen. He'll have you come out the way he wants you to come out. About what he plans. Amen. About what we'll preach you on. Don't travel this seemeth right way. Don't travel this seemeth right way. Amen. If there was no problem with that. We will have revival across America today. If there was no problem with that. We'll still be with the good old King James Version across America today. If there was no problem with that. Amen. We'll still see people saved across America today. If there was no problem with that. We'll still have prayers. Amen. In homes and in churches and in schools and in our governments. We'll still pass laws that are moral according to God's plan. If there wasn't any problem with that. But there is a problem. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, we'll turn to it. 2 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 13. He said, for such, 11, beginning at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also uh, be transformed uh, as ministers of righteousness, uh, who in shall be according uh, to the word. We have a problem. <laughs> we have a problem. But there's one simple thing we must understand about the word of God. And that is you cannot go against his own word. God cannot go against his own word. If he says it's sin, he cannot go against his own word. That would make God simple. Amen. That would break his own laws. That would break his own commandments. God cannot go against his own word. Doesn't make any difference whether it's 19 and 100 or 2019. Amen. Or 800 AD. God is not going to go against his own word. He cannot do that. That. Amen. There'd be no there would be sin. And there's no sin. Can we go against his word and not be sinners? <laughs> Can we go to his word and not be sinning? Amen. When we fail his word, doesn't he condemn us? Amen. Because we went against his word. If you're a Christian, you face condemnation because you went against his word. So God cannot go against his word. Here's a verse I used to use. I thought Daniel and I guess Austin, when I read this, the singer went to it. The Lord took me to it. Actually, I haven't quoted it. I used to quote it quite a lot back when I I was younger, that's what I thought of you all. Amen. But uh, 40 years ago, I, I began to see things happening uh, in the houses of God that shouldn't be happening. I, I began to see people doing things uh, they shouldn't do. I, I began to see modernism uh, uh, trying to creep in uh, where the old past were. Uh, amen. I used to quote this all the time. Uh, Beware, lest any man uh, must pour you through philosophy uh, and vain deceit uh, after the tradition of men uh, and after the ruin of this world. World, uh, and not after Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, Colossians 2 and 8. Uh, and you young people put that down. Colossians 2 and 8. Uh, beware uh, lest any man for you uh, uh, through philosophies uh, and vain deceits uh, after the tradition of men uh, and rhythms of this world uh, and not after Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, I remember that verse. Uh, you younger people, uh, I remember that verse. Uh, us older people should have it down uh, in our hearts and minds. Uh, uh, we should understand Stand, uh, we should be rooted and grounded, uh, although I see older people that are not near as grounded and rooted as I thought they were. So, every false teacher represents this verse. Every false teacher represents this verse. And I'm going to say again, remember God's love never crosses the sin line. Amen. His love never crosses the sin line. And by that I mean, He doesn't okay sin ever. He never crosses the sin line. Amen. Now, when you hear, if you read anything on the, all that was trying to take place in the United Methodists, and I'm glad they went with tradition and stopped it, amen, like 53 to 47 
90% only by the votes of the foreign country. Amen. Were they able to stop it? Don't condemn every method. It can come in your association. It can come in any place. And it has tried to come in a lot of places. Amen. But here's what happens always. You always notice those that are stand for the right thing in the Bible quotes Bible. And what the sin is. They say what sin is. They say what the Bible says sin is. Those that goes against the Bible never quotes Bible. They use it very loosely. Well, God's an all-inclusive God. God love goes everywhere. God loves the not extend into sin. God's love, remember that. God's love never extends into sin. Amen. Hey, when the prodigal son came home, that's when the father wrapped his arms around about him. Now, I know God always loves us, but he's the love that can go in into sin to okay sin. But every time arguments on any issue that goes against the word of God is never given by what it says, general thing, God's a loving God. Yes, he is. He's also a consuming fire. Uh, the same love of God uh, uh, that opened the door in order to come on into the ark. Uh, amen. Uh, is the same loving God. Uh, amen. Uh, that shut him into the ark. Uh, and the same loving God uh, that seven days later, uh, amen, broke up the fountains of the deep. I uh, uh, poured the rain down. I uh, uh, broke cottonness apart. I uh, uh, destroyed everything. Uh, every living creature uh, that wasn't in the ark. Uh, amen. Uh, except those in the sea uh, that the same loving God that brought judgment. Uh, the same loving God that brought Lot uh, out of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, is the same loving God uh, that rained for and bring strong uh, upon it when they go out. He's the same loving God uh, that turned Lot's wife uh, into a pillar of salt. That's the love of God also. Amen. You'll never find them. What are they? Beware, at least any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. I've seen it over and over again in the past week. Philosophy and vain deceit, not Bible verses. Not Bible verses okay in homosexuality. Amen. Not Bible verses okay in sin. Not Bible verses. Uh, amen. Those that was against that have Bible verses. Why? That things are wrong. Uh, amen. Uh, or I'm not against uh, that sin more than any other sin. Uh, amen. Uh, just not being a Christian will send you to the pits of hell. Uh, amen. Uh, you can be the best moral person, uh, boy or girl in the world, uh, and you reject the calling of God. Uh, that's unforgivable. Amen. Amen. Rejecting the calling of God. So, our text verses, Jesus makes it very simple in Matthew, and we all know these verses. He makes it very simple. There's two ways, one to life and one to death. <laughs> There's a straight gate, and it's narrow. Amen. Amen. When you become a Christian, you're going to narrow down through your walk. I'm not going to tell you, uh, amen, uh, that you need to do all the things as a sinner. Your walks will be narrowed down. Uh, hey, uh, and if you're not a Christian, you may not understand. Uh, well, I won't have near them. I'll mash you laugh for laugh day after day. I'll mash you laugh for laugh uh, hour after hour. Uh, I'll mash you joy for joy. Uh, you can bring me any sinful thing, uh, any sinful person. Uh, I'll mash you joy for joy uh, every day of the week. Uh, I'll mash you uh, comfort for comfort. Comfort, uh, joy for joy, uh, laugh for laugh. Uh, hey, I'm having the time of my life. Uh, I enjoy uh, uh, walking in God's way. Uh, it's a straight way. Uh, there's things that has to uh, get off. Maybe when you get saved, now this is going this for explanation. Uh, amen. Uh, you might get uh, 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 the straight way, narrow way may be this wide. Uh, hey, uh, and sometimes you start preaching uh, and it narrows in a little bit. Uh, amen. Some of the things you have to drop off. Now it's still on the way, but God doesn't allow you. He allows somebody else maybe to do this because it's not against the word of God. It's just simply options. Yeah, options. Where you eat, where you go, and a lot of things are options. Romans 14 explains all that to you. Eating ham and eggs is an option. If you was a Jew, it was an option. If you believe God, everything clean, Paul was okay with it. He could ha he could sit down with the ham and egg breakfast. Uh, but if you're going to offend his brothers, okay, I'm going to have ham and eggs this morning. Uh, uh, the Jewish people come in and they're kind of weak in the faith. This brother of mine, he's a little weak, so I'll skip the ham. 
Yeah. <laughs> I have to, I mean, I have to be in the power of God to eat grits. <laughs> Shoo, ain't buried any things in life I don't like. I tasted those things about 30 years ago, and my goodness, I hated them 30 years ago. I, I tried it about 20 years ago, and I hated those things. Please don't serve me grits. If you ever invite me, I, I'll eat them, and I'll do my best. Amen. You'll see me eating real fast with all the butter and all the salt and everything else I can pour on them. Hey, I, but I'd rather have ham. I just have grits. Oh my. Bless your heart. I love grits. <laughs> that, explain, that explains a lot. Yeah. Straight and narrow. <laughs> Amen. I, I straight and narrow is the way. I, hey, I don't mind the straight and narrow way. I, hey, I guarantee you. I, and, I, and I don't have to explain all this. All you have been saved for quite a few years has the things narrowed down for you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sure. Sure to have. Yeah. It mean, didn't mean you were sinful before, but things narrowed down. It's kind of like that drawing perspective. <laughs> you know, if you want to go that way, the closer I get the gate. <laughs> okay, maybe that's right. Why is the gate? Of course it's why. You don't have any issues. You don't have any control. It don't make any difference. Amen. You don't have any, it don't make any difference. You're lost. Where you're, where you're a sinner lost, big bad sinner, good sinner, in between sinner, uh, lying sinner, cheating sinner, uh, good moral person sinner. Uh, amen. It really doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's still a broad way. Uh, it leads to death. Uh, amen. Uh, so we don't preach you live godly uh, that we may receive glory. Uh, has nothing to do with me whatsoever. Uh, uh, I, if I ever bring glory to me, then I fail by all means. I, I remember what Norman Teller said. I, I believe, and I used to use a lot too. I believe I first one. I, I heard him say it many years ago. Uh, he said, at the end of the week, uh, that you see me more than you see God, you and I one failed. Amen. Every time you sing a song, every time we testify, every time we preach, every time we do anything, amen, in the name of God. Uh, if you want people to see you more than God, then there's a failure there. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, so we not bring glory. Uh, we bring glory to his name. Uh, our light shines and uh, may bring glory. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, to God. Uh, that's how we bring glory. Uh, uh, so we don't preach to live godly. Uh, you may receive glory. We preach living godly because uh, it's the path you must be on. The path you must be on. Okay, 2 Timothy. This will help younger ones. And us old ones too. And, and we're going to read the whole thing. 2 Timothy 3. And it's talking about in the last day perilous times to come. Now, understand one thing. That's the one thing you know about last days. Don't get caught up in all this history lessons. Don't get caught up in all what the Middle East going. Don't get caught up in all those things like that where nobody, uh, a sinner, can sit comfortably under the message. Get caught up in the last day perilous time will come. Get caught up to know what's going to happen in the last days. Uh, amen. Uh, maybe Russia is going to invade somebody. Maybe somebody else is going to take somebody else's land. Uh, I don't know. Uh, amen. But that don't bring condemnation, uh, uh, condemnation uh, on your soul. Uh, what brings condemnation uh, is men shall be lovers of their own self. Uh, amen. Uh, what bring condemnation uh, on the poor effects across America? Uh, amen. Uh, that they uh, uh, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, these people debating that half were minister, uh, half of them have a, a, a ministry degree, many of them doctor's degrees uh, in theology, uh, debating what simple sin is. Ever learning, amen. never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, then, but we're going to go on down, verse 10 through 12. Paul is telling them and Timothy, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, affliction. Isn't that good? Paul said, here's what you know about me. <laughs> I drive the fanciest camel on the parking lot. <laughs> Decked out in gold. <laughs> I live in a big fine home. Have all kinds of money in the bank. I'm well known all over the country. He said, Thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions. Wow. <laughs> 
That's Paul. I don't know how come I think I should live easier than Paul. But we do. We as a people. <laughs> I'm talking about us. Who has came to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Endured meaning it was tough. Endured meaning it was tough. He didn't say in persecution, I laughed all the way through, which I endured. But, there's that but again, isn't it good? By out of them all, the Lord delivered me. <laughs> isn't that good? That's what I like about Paul. Every time you read about bad things that happen to him, I, right after that, you always read about joy. I, almost every single time. I, man, I, when we get in, a, we ought to be, make sure. I, we're in a habit, we testify. I, hey, I, I have a bad day today. I, I, this or that happened. I, I, this person I, I upset me at work. I, or my washing machine blew up. I, hey, man, or this happened. I, and there's some bad things that happen. I, oh, I, but we ought to say, but the Lord joined deliver me out of them all but the Lord is glorious but the Lord amen he is good hey, don't ever leave us with gloom and doom never in the testimony with gloom and doom we serve the king of kings the Lord of lords amen never in the testimony it was gloom and doom but in the testimony by the power of God by the grace of God by the spirit of God amen the Lord will take care. Never leave a testimony to a sinful world of gloom and doom. You make sure you get in Christ will take care. Amen. He said, Yea, now here's the verse we, Yea, and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So if a preacher of the gospel doesn't suffer persecution, he might want to check what he's preaching about. <laughs> that, I would take, I'd take that serious. All that will live godly in Christ. Now that doesn't mean you always suffer from people in church. Doesn't mean you always suffer from people at work. It means you're suffering from the world or maybe a church and work and maybe family. It, it can obviously mean that. Amen. But all that shall live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, if I had no persecution in my life, I, I believe I, I'd be checking uh, on what my message is about. Because the Bible very plainly tells me, uh, Clarence, uh, if you live godly uh, and you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, amen, uh, as Paul was, uh, and he's talking to Timothy, uh, he is, uh, amen, you're going to suffer persecution. So... I take that face value. So the single right way, man doesn't need to change God's love. He doesn't change. God's love will allow you to live against his word. He will not. God's love will not allow you to live against his word. Understand that. That way always lead to destruction. Okay, there was more and the Lord said that's enough. So I quit. Give us a song.